What's up everybody and welcome back to my channel. I wanted to do one last hurrah think piece video about Love is Blind season one to talk about something that had been bothering me ever since the season wrapped up. I feel as though the women on the show were incredibly misrepresented and that the underlining theme of the first season is that women are single because of our own problems and that we are always our own worst enemies in the dating world, whereas the men get to coast on by the despite a lot of things pointing to the contrary throughout the season. So I'm gonna go on a woman by woman basis here and just start off with Giannina. The overarching theme of her single dem was that she's crazy. So Giannina is this crazy Latina girl who always sabotages everything and Damien is this exacerbated like all quote unquote all American guy who was supposed to be her savior. He was supposed to put up with all the mess that Giannina put him through to teach her that love is possible possible if you just you know rely on a man to teach it to you like he's got to be patient with you for sure because you're an irrational woman but love is possible despite the fact that Damien did start his very own fair share of fights like in the restaurant when he started just picking at her and telling her that if she keeps whatever up he she will lose him anytime she has a concern with him he tells her that the only reason she has a concern is because she self sabotages and then at the very end while they were at the altar, he claimed that they both agreed that they were gonna keep on dating though they weren't ready to get married quite yet, but he still bashed her and blamed her for everything in front of her family and friends. Somehow, Giannina is still the problem here. Another interesting thing about Damien is that he doesn't actually seem to take this relationship thing all that serious because he was the only cast member whose parents didn't meet their significant other. And to this day, though they've been together for like two years, his parents still have not met Giannina, even though they all live in Atlanta, Georgia. Is that like a kind of guy who's taking his relationship serious? Because to me, it doesn't really seem that way, especially with all the holidays that have passed um, between them meeting and getting engaged, calling it off, and now. Next up is Amber. This is actually a very different take from my original perspective of her. Remember, I have a video and I'll link to it down below of how Amber, I felt like, was just like a hobosexual who was looking for someone to take care of her. But now, upon learning more information and seeing more of her revealing her dynamic with Barnett, I think that the person that she should have been calling shysty at the reunion was Barnett, her husband, and let me get into why. Throughout the season of the show, we watched as Jessica continuously felt comfortable enough to go up to Barnett and talk badly about his fiance, Amber. She basically was like, I never thought you'd go for a woman like that, as if to say that Amber is beneath Barnett, and Barnett didn't say anything, but oh, like I like her and I'm happy with her. Who cares about whether or not you like her or you're happy with her? You should tell this woman not to tell you or not to think that your fiance is below you. Like that deserves a lot more serious of an answer than, oh, well, she might be beneath me, but I like her. Like I did not like his response. And the first couple of times that Jessica approached him, he was too receptive to the conversation. He didn't tell her, wait, 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 stop right now. You're engaged to someone else. I'm engaged to someone else. Let's not have this go. He entertained way too many conversations with Jessica, including her telling him that she would, she walked around naked in front of windows and asking him where he lived, uh, which apartment, and he responded in kind, saying that he too walks around naked in front of windows and I live in this apartment, this side of the building or whatever. Like, really, dude, really? And I think the worst part of it all was that Amber did not even know that these conversations between Barnett and Jessica were happening until she watched the show back with the rest of us two years later. So imagine how dumb you would feel, like how humiliated you would be that you never had the opportunity to prepare not only yourself, but your family and friends um, for those scenes to play out. Like she didn't know it was happening. So like as each episode dropped, she was finding out more and more about the conversations that her fiance was allowing to happen behind her back. And lastly, let's get into the debt, which is probably the biggest like uh, controversial point of Amber as a character in Love is Blind. So um, it was very well advertised that Amber had over $20,000 in debt. It was student debt from a degree that she did not finish. But 
We never really knew until she told us online and in interviews that the reason that she could not finish her degree was because she had a very traumatic um, incident in her life. She had to have an abortion. Um, she had no support from her boyfriend at the time and then she fell into a depression. And so from there, of course, she couldn't finish school. She was way too depressed to continue on. And then um, more of that debt piled on and she was unemployed because of a workplace injury that she could not obviously bounce back from so easily. So the fact that the show omitted these very traumatic things from Amber's reasoning for being in debt is really disappointing to me because these are huge things. These are not things to sweep under the rug. These are things that are deep enough where I would imagine that Amber feels re-victimized every time her debt is thrown in her face, knowing the reason that she was in that situation in the first place. You know what I mean? Like she was depressed and she was also um, injured very badly. That's why she was in debt, yet the show did not air that. And now anytime people talk about her, they call her this gold digger, this whatever, when that doesn't seem to be the case at all. You know, it's a very different take than I had from her in my original video ever since the uh, season air uh, wrapped up and the, the cast was able to talk a little bit more about who and what they were. And not only that, but Barnett actually had a lot more debt than Amber had, but that was never once brought up on the show. Instead, the show portrayed Amber to be uh, an aimless gold digger who never wanted to work. She just wanted to pop out someone's babies so that she could stay home because she thinks being a stay at home mom is an easy job. But like there were never any drawbacks to Barnett being illustrated on the show. It really does make you wonder why their story was portrayed so one-sidedly as though um, Amber was this massive uh, burden on Barnett when they both were coming into their marriage with hardcore debt and trying to navigate their way around it as a couple. Now let's get into Lauren and Cameron, the holy couple from Love is Blind. So the only major controversial issue that they had in their storyline was the interracial um, aspect of their relationship with Lauren being African American and Cameron being white. The whole entire season revolved around whether or not um, Cameron's whiteness would be acceptable within Lauren's family. like as her dad who is apparently some kind of huge advocate for black families sticking together despite his own divorce would he be accepting of Cameron in Lauren's life um, we never once got to wonder the same about Cameron's family yeah like we all know that Cameron has always been down with the swirl particularly dating black women but it still would have been a very interesting conversation nonetheless and a lot more of a realistic conversation as well these things in interracial relationships are never a one way street. It's always, you know, both sides wondering whether or not they'll be accepted. So I do think that it was incredibly unfair to lay the burden of acceptance and this interracial relationship solely on Lauren and Lauren's family alone. Especially if you keep in mind that during this press run, Lauren's like, no, like him being white was never a huge deal amongst my family or friends. It was just the way that um, production kept setting it up with all of these questions and answers being stitched together to make it seem as though so it was something that was a lot bigger than what it truly was in real life, which I'm like, you know what? I get it. Reality television works that way, where they amplified little things in order to have a storyline. But are you seeing the pattern here? This is now the third woman whose relationship problems, quote unquote, um, were blamed on her in this show. Now let's get into Carlton. Carlton is a pathological liar. He's incredibly manipulative. He's got like a visceral hatred for women. He psychologically and emotionally abused Diamond on the show by gaslighting her, trying to convince her and the audience that she's crazy or biphobic or whatever. He called her uh, a B-I-T-C-H um, and online he had been making fun of her appearance even more, claiming that her wig smelled or she smelled, claiming that she wasn't a real woman. Like all of these things were were going on leading up to the reunion and yet at the reunion Vanessa Lachey and obviously Nick Lachey did not address it whatsoever. All they did was focus on how brave Carlton was to uh, lead Diamond on up until they were already engaged and blow up in her face and not actually listen to her as she supported him through it and ask her whether or not she would consider giving him another chance and if his sexuality was the thing that was hindering her. 
as if she was not just treated like dirt by this guy for the whole entire world to see. Like I thought that was incredibly irresponsible of a message to send to a girl, a woman, sorry, who had just gotten out of an abusive, manipulative relationship. They acted like, oh, like, yeah, he might've called you a B-I-T-C-H. He might've gaslit you. He might've like humiliated you in front of the whole world, but he was brave, you know, like he was living his truth. So I think you should take him back, don't you? Very, very irresponsible. Yet again, here now, the message that they're sending in the Carlton Diamond dynamic is that the reason the Diamond is single is because she's too picky about her sexuality uh, choices in uh, a mate, or she is too unforgiving, or like whatever it might be. But the problem definitely is not with Carlton. We now already know, remember, I just did a video about this um, that I will also link to down below that Kenny was lying about being blindsided at the altar by Kelly. It turns out that the two of them both agreed weeks in advance to say no at the altar and continue dating, only for him to ghost her and turn up a couple months later with a serious girlfriend. A lot of you guys in the comments did actually lead me to kind of start questioning whether or not he did enter the relationship, sorry, uh, enter the experiment with a girlfriend that was already established in his life because his behavior here just does not make that much set, uh, sense. Like he did not want to have sex with Kelly. He uh, did not want to continue to honor their commitment to dating outside of the pods and he very quickly popped up with a serious girlfriend like it just doesn't seem to add up um, especially with him lying and allowing her to be dragged through the mud by fans of the show thanks to this very false impression that he's been giving viewers since we now know that both Kenny and Kelly wanted to say no at the altar Aren't you curious about why Kenny's reservations about Kelly weren't aired on the show? Instead, we just saw Kelly as this person who was way too picky to ever find love because producers were zooming in on all of her reservations about Kenny, but we never once got to hear anything that Kenny was reserved about when it came to Kelly. A little bit of a red flag, if you ask me. And lastly, we've got Jessica and Mark. We know that Jessica had actually tried to leave the show in Mexico, but wasn't allowed to. I did a video on that that, again, I will link down below. So this entire time that we're watching, the two of them interact in Mexico and then back home, Mark was very much aware, very well aware that Jessica did not want to be there. Her heart was not 1000% into the relationship. So watching it all back, do you not get a little bit of the creeps about the way he just kept pushing for this relationship to move forward with an unwilling participant? Especially knowing that her dog back home was like dying or something like that. Like it, it's very manipulative in my opinion. I feel as though he saw an opportunity to get a very sympathetic edit that would of course have the audience 1000% in his favor if they didn't look close enough. Um, you know, as Jessica was the big bad wolf who was hurting this poor innocent man who did not have the backbone to walk away from a person who very clearly was not attracted to him and was not interested in him. Jessica let it be known quite a few times by not wearing her ring, by literally telling him that she wasn't sure about her attraction level to him, her confidence in the relationship, um, and by outright telling him that she was attracted to other men in his face. And yet somehow he is the 1000% victim who um, could not have done anything differently in his relationship with Jessica. And unfortunately for Jessica, based on the way she had to shut down her Instagram for a while because of rabid fans, a lot of people did buy into that storyline. And you know, it's, quite sad that, you know, this is a real life person at the end of this um, level of manipulation. I, you know, like I said in my initial video about the two of these uh, people, I felt as though Mark was incredibly manipulative and pretending to really be like this love struck puppy who didn't know anything about dating just for the sympathy edit that it would get him, knowing that it would help him in the dating world outside of the show and potentially for marketing purposes as well. Now you guys, looking back, can you see how how the producers of Love is Blind kind of imply that women who are single are single either because they're too crazy, 
gold diggers, unwilling to date outside of their race, closed off in their sexual preferences, too picky, or in competition with other women for their men. These are all very famous and very old and very reductive uh, tropes of femininity that the, the producers and creators of Love is Blind force each woman to fall within in order to create storylines for the first season of the show. I think that it's very harmful to women's representation within media that 1,000% uh, of the relationship problems were blamed squarely on the women, while men were allowed to play victims in some cases and saviors in others. But those are just my thoughts about the season. As usual, I'm more excited to hear what you had to say about everything. So please do make sure to leave all of your thoughts and opinions in the comment section down below and we'll chat. That's all for now. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.